Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to analyze this parallel RLC circuit that has 120 volt, 60 hertz AC signal connected to it. For this analysis, I'm going to calculate the voltages across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor, which is of course the same as the source voltage because these components are all in parallel. I'm also going to calculate the current through the resistor, the current through the inductor, the current through the capacitor, and then finally the total current. And the process that I'm going to follow to do this is to calculate the impedances of the components, calculate the currents through the components, and then calculate the total current. I'll also do an alternative analysis where I will calculate the total impedance and then use that value to calculate the total current. All right, let's get started. First thing to do is to calculate the impedances of the components. And the impedance of the resistor is a very easy one. There is no calculation to do. It's 250 ohms. Resistance never changes. And since it's a resistor, the phase angle is zero degrees. The impedance of the inductor is frequency dependent. It's equal to two pi times the frequency, which is 60 hertz, times the inductance, which is 0.65 henrys. This calculation will give me the reactance, and then the phase angle is 90 degrees, because it's an inductor. When I plug those numbers into a calculator, I get 245.04 ohms with that phase angle of 90 degrees. And then finally, the calculation for the impedance of the capacitor, well, that one is also frequency dependent. It's 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance of 1.5 microfarads. Gives me the magnitude and the phase angle for capacitance is minus 90 degrees. When I plug those numbers into a calculator, I get 1768.4 ohms. And again, that phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So I can put those numbers on the schematic and I've put them on in both rectangular notation as well as polar notation. Okay, now I'm going to calculate the currents through each one of these components. Let's start with the resistor. The current through the resistor is the voltage across it divided by its impedance. To do this calculation, I divide the magnitudes, I get 0.48 amps, and I add the phases to get zero degrees. And of course, I can convert this into rectangular notation. And I've got the values here in both rectangular notation and polar notation. Next current to calculate is the current through the inductor. Again, voltage across the inductor divided by its impedance. Divide the magnitudes. And subtract the denominator phase from the numerator phase. So I get 0 minus 90 for a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. I can also convert that into rectangular coordinates. And I've got that written out right here. 0 minus J, 489.71 milliamps, or 489.7 milliamps with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Last individual current to calculate is that through the capacitor. And when I convert that into the rectangular coordinates, I get 0 plus J, 67.858 milliamps, or 67.858 milliamps with a phase angle of 90 degrees. So to calculate the total current or the current that's coming from the source, I can use Kirchhoff's current law and see that that current coming from the source gets split through the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. So the total current is equal to the current through the resistor plus the current through the inductor plus the current through the capacitor. To do this addition, I can take the values as they are in rectangular coordinates, add the real parts together, I get 480 milliamps plus zero plus zero. So that's 0 0.48 amps. And then add the imaginary parts. I've got 0 minus 489.71 milliamps plus 67.858 milliamps. So that gives me minus J 0 0.4218 amps. And in polar coordinates, that's equal to the square root of 0 0.48 squared plus 0 0.4218 squared for the magnitude. And the phase angle will be the arctan of negative 0 0.4218 divided by 0 0.48 plug those numbers into a calculator, and I get 0 0.639 amps, phase angle of negative 41.31 degrees. And there's my values for my currents all over here on the right-hand side underneath the schematic. Now let's look at an alternative method to figure out what that total current is, and that involves first calculating the total impedance. So total impedance, because these impedances are in parallel, is equal to the sum of the inverses of the individual impedances 
to the negative one. So in other words, it's the inverse of the sum of the inverses of the impedances. So if I plug those values in, I get, and then I do each one of these inverses. And then I need to add these together. And it's probably easiest if these are in rectangular coordinates. So add the real parts. I only have this four times 10 to the minus three and add the imaginary parts. Now to get the inverse of this, I want this value in polar coordinates. And finally, if I take the inverse of this value, I get, finally, I can get the total current using the total impedance that I just calculated because the equivalent circuit looks like this. And so that total current is simply the voltage from the source divided by that total impedance. And in summary, here are all of the values that I calculated. All of the impedances, the voltages across each one of the components, the currents through each one of the components, and finally, the total current coming from the source. And this example came from a free online open source textbook, and you can find a link to that textbook in the description. If you do go there, you'll find all sorts of other materials, including more examples like this for AC and DC circuits, as well as links to other video tutorials like this one. As always, I really appreciate you watching. See you next time.